What will become very obvious as we work our way through the Victorian and Edwardian styles is you needed two things for styles to change. One is books, the other is money. Uh, so here at the Gothic Revival style, A.J. Downing publishes a famous book called Cottage Residences, which popularizes the uh, Carpenter Gothic style. We have some excellent examples of Carpenter Gothic here in the city. Most of the remaining ones are up on Telegraph Hill here on Filbert Street, 1882, the very end of the style. The style ends in 1890. Here the Abner Phelps House, 1850s, one of the first ones built in the city along with these two homes up on Alta. So A.J. Downing's book was very popular, and then he wrote another book in 1850 called The Architecture of Country Houses, which starts the Italian Italianate style. Now that was very fortuitous for San Francisco because all the money from the gold rush came through. And here are the hallmarks, or the characteristics of the Italian Italianate style. And there are many variations. Here you have flat front Italianate on the left and then true Italianate on the right. Uh, but the money that came through with the gold rush allowed a huge amount of Italianate homes to be built. And it was only much later that these homes were stripped and reskinned in whatever the latest style was. Here we have typical restored Italianates. Here, painted lady myth begins. Um, so then we jump ahead to stick style, which has the hallmark of trying to tell the truth about how things were built. But that wasn't really enough for people. They wanted more ornament to show that they had arrived, that they had money. And so this style very quickly became um, an ornamented style because of all the money that came through San Francisco during the Comstock load. Here are examples of what, on the right about what Painted Lady can really do to destroy a style. Now we jump ahead to Queen Anne. And Queen Anne is the kind of the collection bin of all the previous styles, but it tries to exploit the plasticity, the inness and outness of things, like here at Pierce Street, an excellent example of the style with the corner turret. And uh, here at Page, all the uh, detail that was thrown against these buildings to show that one had money. Now, Queen Anne is also the only style to bridge what I call the 1890 pivot. And the 1890 pivot is a radical revolution in design started by John Ruskin in the 1850s with books and then William Morris popularizes it with his designs and the Arts and Crafts exhibit in 1887 and 1888. The Arts and Crafts movement revolutionizes design and as you can see with the 1890 pivot it's like a meteorite hitting the earth and everything that is new evolves from that. Everything that is prior like the dinosaurs died out. Only Queen Anne survived the jump. Um, here at Shingle Style, it also is an outgrowth of the arts and crafts style. And we have in San Francisco what's called the first Bay Area School. And that's with Bernard Maybeck, uh, Willis Polk, Julia Morgan, and that group. Here in 1882, um, we'll see some of the, the informal massing and the use of shingles, which mark the shingle style here. T uh, ten years later, Ernest Cox had up on Pacific doing a great job, and here in 1909 with Bernard Maybeck right across the street at 3233 Pacific doing it. Here in 1910 with uh, William Knowles also working in the first Bay Area style. Here we jump to Tudor Revival, um, another out offshoot of the arts and crafts movement. Arts and crafts was about a return to handcrafted, well-made things, and so William Morris jumped to what he knew there in Britain about Tudor, and so Tudor Revival happened there and here. Here's Bernard Maybeck uh, working his own particular magic with Tudor Revival, uh, doing a great job. The Roos House up on, uh, uh, is definitely worth a visit. Uh, here, Mission Revival, another outgrowth of the arts and crafts style, uh, but again, what makes it arts and crafts is the use of local vernacular and local materials. So here we have tile roofs, uh, these big, rather elaborate uh, uh, parapets that mark it as Mission Revival. Here at Craftsman, the true American style, it accentuates the horizontal, uh, constructed of all local materials, and as soon as you can see, like here at the Clay Street Address, the uh, mission parapet with the horizontal um, uh, emphasis, you know you've got a craftsman style home. Here at Piedmont and Palm, all of those characteristics are exhibited. And then we get into Spanish Eclectic, which starts around 1910 and is a collection of uh, kind of a grab bag of different styles. You have Spanish Colonial Revival, which wants to be in a Spanish colony. You have uh, here at Spanish Eclectic with Willis Polk, kind of throwing everything together in a style. 
from Mediterranean to revival to Spanish colonial to Spanish revival itself. Uh, here, Mediterranean revival, uh, thousands of these homes were built in the marina and the sunset. 